good morning. Uh, we have a tradition here at uh, St. John's that anytime during the service, if you want to come up and light a candle in memory of someone for prayer um, and thoughts, please feel free to do so. We'll start our service by uh, singing our morning hymn, 415, and let us all rise. Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the mercy, for the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house, and for all who offer hither worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Love and 
for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious in the way, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, steadfast, love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The second lesson is taken from Colossians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, you have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth of the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to you to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you, and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him as you bear fruit in every good work, and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from His glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So that's a lesson. said, What must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put them on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor? to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So that's the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. This is time when we usually do the children's sermon and I'm gonna come down and tell me if this is okay, Stacy. Yeah. Can you see me all? Or would it be better if I sit on a chair? Well, we're going to visit a neighborhood today that is completely different than what we have done before. It's a special neighborhood. It's a neighborhood where little puppies live. This is Patches. Patches also lives in the neighborhood with his mommy, 
and Daddy. And then there's Buster. He's a little puppy, and he also lives right down the street from Patches. And up the street lives a little doggy. Well, <laughs> this little one is called Snowy. And Snowy and Patches and Buster play together all the time in the woods. And as they were playing together in the woods, they heard about a new person in town. This is kind of a different spin on the Good Samaritan, as we know the story very well as it was just read in the Gospel. But here's another way to think about it from the puppy point of view. So a new guy comes into town, and it was a bigger dog, okay? Bigger dog and little dogs, well, the dogs were scared of this big dog. The dog was different. He looked different than they did. He was bigger. He had different fur, and he ate different food, and he barked louder than they did. So all the dogs in the neighborhood were scared of Rusty. This is Rusty. Well, one day, the three dogs were all playing in the woods, and they realized it was time to go home. So Patches said, I gotta go. My daddy's gonna be barking at me if I don't get home. So they all said, we better go. So all three of them started to run through the woods. Well, as they were running, Snowy fell and broke her paw, and she was hurting. But Patches said, my daddy's waiting. i got to run home. You'll be okay. Just limp along. So Patches went away. Buster said, oh, you'll be okay. It's okay. Just limp along. You'll get home. Don't worry. You'll be fine. And Buster went away. Well, poor Snowy was laying there with a broken paw. What was she to do? She was in a lot of pain and she needed help. Then all of a sudden, along comes Rusty, the big dog that everybody was afraid of. But Rusty had compassion on the little puppy. He said, well, I know I'm the new guy in town, but this little puppy needs my help and needs to go home. So he came over to Snowy and he said, don't worry, I'll take care of you. I'll bandage your paw and take you to your mom. Here, hop on my back. So, Snowy got on his back, and Rusty took Snowy home. Well, the next day, he wanted to check on little Snowy to see how she was doing. Well, she was better. But Snowy said, why did you stop to help me? I'm not big like you. I don't bark like you. And I don't eat all that big food like you do. Well, you're different. Well, Rusty said, I care. I care about all of the puppies because we're all God's creatures. And he said, it's my job because I'm a rescue dog. And I like to rescue people. And I like to help them. So the moral of the story is when people need help, you either go tell an adult or a teacher when someone is hurt so that they can call the rescue people or other people that can help someone who is in pain. But Jesus wants us to do this because we are all creatures of God, whether we're little puppies or big puppies, what cultures we come from and how we eat. So all of the dogs then learn to play together in the doggy neighborhood. And this is what Jesus is asking us to do today. It's a popular parable, and I was trying to find another way that we might be able to reach people with that story. So now, for the adults, I'd like you to go back in time and to think a little bit about what it was like to travel between the ancient villages at the time of Jesus. Some of the towns were enclosed in walls, while outside of the walls, the terrain was dry and desolate. As you can imagine, life was not easy back then. There was no trains, no planes, no modern transportation, buses or cars. So when people wanted to visit each other in nearby villages, they had to go by foot. But there was one rocky road that had narrow paths that crossed over the cliffs. Some of them descended down more than 3,000 feet, and nothing, nothing could be seen for miles. It wasn't the best place to travel alone, as robbers sometimes hid in the rocks and attacked travelers. 
There weren't any cell phones in those days to call 911 or to get help. So this was the road that was known from Jerusalem to Jericho that we read about in the Bible today. Jesus is teaching us about the parable of the Good Samaritan who came to the aid of a certain man who traveled and was attacked and robbed and left to die. Most of us know that story, but I'm challenging you today to find a little bit deeper meaning. It's a story about mercy, compassion, and loving our neighbor. Before we begin, let's look at some reasons why the Jews and the Samaritans hated one another. One source said that the Samaritans were people of the Old Testament, and Israel was split in two parts, Judah, Judea in the south and Samaria in the north. But there were differences in how they worshipped. When the Assyrians conquered Samaria, they took some of the people as captives, and then other foreigners with pagan beliefs went to live in Samaria. The Samaritans who remained in their land then intermarried with those people, and they practiced a religion that was a mixture of Judaism and idolatry. They only accepted the first five books of Moses, and they rejected the writings of the prophets, according to these sources. They believed that Mount Gerizim was the place where Moses established worship and not Jerusalem. And then violators of the Jewish law often found safety in Samaria. So with these divisions, you can see where it would create friction and hatred. But even loving one's neighbor was not foreign to these people, the Jews or the Samaritans. Bible commentator Mikhail Parson says this, quote, the concern for the stranger and alien is a repeated theme throughout the Torah, unquote. So in our lesson today, an expert in religious law questions Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responds to him with that question, how do you understand what it means? The law can be traced back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6, 4, 5, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We heard it today in the readings. Jesus confirms that if one loves God and his neighbor as himself, he will live. But Jesus is making it clear that there's more to loving our neighbor than just knowing about it. It's about action, about doing what's right. It means having compassion on all people and showing mercy. One theologian says Jesus is forcing us to admit that our neighbor is the one most foreign to us. You know, the one we want to avoid the most. It can be a person of another race, social class, nationality, religion, or anyone we consider an alien. So the lawyer tries to prove himself right when he talks to Jesus. Did you notice, though, how the lawyer responded about who his neighbor was when, he, when the man was left to die? He said, the one who showed the man mercy. Could it be that he couldn't bring himself to say the word Samaritan? We don't know. Bible scholar Mary Brueggemann says, you can almost hear Jesus telling the lawyer to get your mind off yourself and to go and show compassion for your neighbor. And that's any person you see in need of human compassion. We're all comfortable with our church family and friends and co-workers who love us. But today, more than ever, we live in that diverse world. Our neighbor may be different, comes from different cultures. They speak other languages. They may dress different. Or they may wish of God in different ways. And if you've ever tried to trace your family tree, it makes you realize that most of us know that our ancestors at one time or another who came to this country were considered aliens because they came from other cultures. Our cultures celebrate God's diverse creation. We're all a part of the human family. This week I was searching for a modern day example of the Good Samaritan. And I stumbled over a video news report that was astounding about how Good Samaritans saved the life of a woman. As I watched the video unfold, it told an amazing story of how peoples from vast careers and backgrounds joined together as perfect strangers to save her life. 
The woman was driving her SUV near a busy intersection when she apparently passed out at the wheel. One of her co-workers driving behind her jumped out of the car and ran into the street, waving and screaming her hands for help. A man in army fatigues jumped out of his car and ran over to the woman's vehicle. Soon several men and women ran and pushed themselves up against this SUV to try to slow it down and push it out of the intersection. One woman ran to her car to get her exercise weights so a man could smash the back window and open the door to get to the woman to get her help. There was a nurse that jumped into action. And the news report said the group of Samaritans grew to as high as 20 people. They assisted in the rescue and pushed the car to a nearby intersection off the street where the woman received medical attention. For the woman in the SUV who needed that attention, who were her neighbors? The other ones, the strangers, those who showed mercy and compassion. They saved her life and probably the lives of others at that intersection. There was a diversity of races, language, and careers as you watch the interviews. All perfect strangers, but they saw a need and they jumped into action. No one thought twice about passing her by and keeping their own schedules. They saw she needed help and they jumped into action. Sometimes we're like the lawyer in the parable as we try to justify why we should not help someone. Maybe we're too busy and we have our busy schedules. These thoughts seem to ease our conscience, but it's not what Christ is teaching us today. As Christians, Jesus reminds us that we need to set the example for compassion. We're not bound by our loving family and friends or those of our own race. Mercy and compassion crosses all boundaries. For the woman driving the SUV who needed that medical help, mercy came through the help of 20 strangers. For the man in the parable, compassion came from a total stranger, a Samaritan, one of the despised cultures of the Jewish people. Take a look at the action verbs when you read that verse again. What did the Samaritan do? He went up to him, bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine, put him on his animal, brought him to an inn, took care of him, took out two denarii, gave the innkeeper instructions to care for him, and repaid extra money on the trip back. It's a reminder of how we're to live our lives. Through our baptism, we're a part of the body of Christ. So we're special agents of Jesus in the world. It means we have a responsibility of working for God's kingdom, justice and peace, mercy and compassion, respecting and caring for others. Being a good neighbor doesn't mean we get to pick the people who we want to help. Jesus tells us eternal life is not found in knowing, but in doing even if it means helping our enemies. We all have the love of Christ within us. So when that happens, we become a beacon of light to give others hope in their dark days. This past week, I felt a need to pray for the many people who needed comfort and healing from all of the tragedies over the 4th of July weekend. So on short notice, we tried to notify as many people in both churches as we could to gather for a special service of lament and healing. I hope those of you who attended found the services meaningful. For those who couldn't attend, we hope to offer other opportunities for special services in the future. But it was an opportunity to be Samaritans to strangers who were suffering and needed healing through prayer. As God's people, we sometimes, all we can do is pray. Jesus told his disciples, when two or three are gathered together, in my name, I am in the midst of them. The parable reminds us our neighbor is the one who needs us. All of us travel on our own pathway, and sometimes it can be rocky and wild. We walk through experiences in life, and there's narrow passages and high cliffs and desolate areas. And there are bandits hiding that challenges our faith. There are the bandits who drain our spirits, our bodies from illness and sorrow failure and disappointment, aging, loneliness, and other challenges. But we're not left desolate. 
we have the greatest hope of all in Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection gives us the hope of eternal life. Jesus Christ is our divine good Samaritan, the one who rescues us from all the beatings we take in life, the one who turns to us as he heals our sorrows. He's ready and waiting to bind up our wounds and care for us. Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble and suffering, but take heart, I have overcome the world. One commentary says this, mercy sees only need and responds with compassion. So as we're sent into the world this week, Jesus is telling us to go and do likewise. Amen. Continue now with the hymn of the day, number 423. Let us rise. Rise as you are able. still in the back of the church, so we will uh, continue with our offertory response.
us pray together the prayer that is found in your bulletin. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May be seated. We'll continue with prayers of the church. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all those in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, you created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of the fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. God of grace. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle social structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious, religious profiling and discrimination. God of grace. Come near to all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty. Hope where there is despair. Love in the face of neglect. Comfort where there is death. And healing in illness. We especially continue to pray for all those impacted by the violence this past week and for all of those in our hearts. Especially we pray for Phyllis, Elizabeth, Pat, Criola, the Michael family, Cindy, Audre, and our friend who was in the car accident, and all of those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. God of grace. We pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to descend upon this congregation. Visit us and lead us and guide us to our mission and to growth. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. our service with hymn number 551 for all those who are able to stand. <laughs> 